In this tutorial, you will be able to understand a fundamental skill in deciphering 19th century handwriting in order to more accurately interpret the information in Maryland land records. Just like today, people back then each had their own unique quirks to their penmanship. However, to make it a little easier, we're practicing reading handwriting of professional court clerks who wrote out legal documents on a daily basis and often had far better handwriting than, say, the average person writing a quick letter to a friend. We are focusing on just one fundamental technique to add to your toolkit, deciphering handwriting through comparison. Knowing how to read basic cursive is vital, so if you would like a refresher or have not yet had the chance to learn cursive, then I recommend first visiting Donna Young's website at donnayoung.org forward slash penmanship which provides great tutorials and worksheets on practicing and learning cursive. Knowing how to write cursive is one of the best ways to learn how to read it. Now, going back to reading 19th century cursive, it is not that different from modern cursive, especially when compared to 17th and 18th century cursive. However, even when dealing with 19th century writing, we can find some challenges. As a reference archivist, users often show me a close-up photo they took of a few words that they are hoping to decipher. And sometimes I luck out, but I usually need to see the entire document for context. It often is easy to figure out commonly used words like the or and, as well as common names, but more unique names of people or of places can be challenging. And sometimes even common words can be difficult to read until you get used to that specific writer's penmanship, as we'll see in our first of three examples. Our first example shows a close-up of a phrase from Carroll County Land Records from 1840. The word in the parentheses is the one that I'm a little unsure of before I get to actually look at the entire document. So if we compare this to the rest of the document, we can find a fairly common word aforesaid that has a section that looks a little similar to that mystery word. As we can see, the writer is actually merging the O and the R in aforesaid together, making our mystery word orchard. Our second example is a close-up of a last name. In this case, I figured it could be Surly or maybe Turley, but when we look at the entire document, which is a land record from Baltimore County in 1857, we see that the clerk actually misspelled the last name. It's what we would call a typo nowadays. And the last name is actually Shirley. Finally, our third example shows a close-up of a word that appears to be the word raid, or it might be the word said, but it's a little tough to tell when we are just looking at that single word. So let's look at more of the document. Now let's just go with the assumption that it might actually be the word said. So we're looking for uh, words that have the letter S in it. We're able to find the word heirs and the word also, but the way that the writers form the S is a little different. So maybe it is the word raid. <laughs> However, if you look a little further, we find that words beginning with S show him forming the S differently, like in the word sold, and it's becoming more and more likely that the mystery word is said, and we eventually find another instance of the word said written a little bit more clearly. Now, as an extra practice activity, 
I'm showing a close-up of a slightly hastily written last name. And while you may have some good guesses about what it is, you now have the opportunity to look at the whole document to see what you can find through comparison. And you can pause the video to take a closer look if you need to. So, reviewing more of an historical document can help you make more sense of difficult or confusing cursive. It lets you compare one difficult word with the rest of the individual's writing in a document, which can reveal quirks in their handwriting or even shed light on human error. Being able to decipher historical handwriting yourself means that you do not have to rely on transcriptions of documents since transcriptions also can have their own errors, and there are also many historical documents that are not yet transcribed, since transcriptions require a great deal of funding, staffing, and volunteer work. Building a toolbox of techniques, of which this is one fundamental part, will help you become more self-reliant and an even stronger critical thinker when performing your own research. In case you did give the activity a try, the last name turned out to be Sherman. The writer does a far better job with the last name if you see Thomas B. Sherman at the top left of the screen. So good luck as you continue to build your skills in reading historical handwriting, and just know that continued practice and repetition will help make it increasingly easier. Thank you.